Not too long ago, I did a video showing off the Arduino pen plotter I built back in high school, and in that video, I boldly claimed that I could have gone with a much simpler, almost all wood design, and would have gotten less backlash. Considering this one's already to 95% made from wood, the only way to achieve this would be by replacing the linear rails with wood as well, which undoubtedly unlocks a whole new level of parsimony. Furthermore, I also said I would at some point build a new pen plotter, one that doubles up as a laser engraver, so I think it's time for me to put my engineering where my mouth is and see if I bit off more than I can chew. Let's build that marvel of primitive technology. Although, on second thought, or rather, after looking at the price tag of high power lasers, I need to take back what I said about the laser part of it. That's just not in the budget this time. But don't worry, I have a great idea what to replace the laser with to get about similar wood charring capabilities. Here's the CAD model I quickly put together, so this is what it's going to look like, heavily inspired by 3D printers in terms of the print bed, with the linear rail system being almost the same as on my future DIY 3D printer, except it's all made from wood, even the V-Groove rollers. Now you might ask, but Benjamin, you just announced your DIY 3D printer series, why would you start another big project before even having started on that one? Well, the answer is, I'm using the plotter to test and validate some of the design concepts on the printer. For the material, I'm going to use reclaimed wood, scraps, and a failed project of mine. So let's get cutting. No worries, I'm gonna keep talking while on camera me does all the work. So as you might have noticed, the main structure of the plotter is pieced together from many thin slats, pretty much the way you'd build a balsa wood airplane, and though that's mainly to save material and make the thing lighter for the 28BYJ to push around, I also figured the less wood it's made of, the less wood there is that can twist and bend until the plotter doesn't work anymore, considering I'm using regular spruce for a CNC that's supposed to be accurate. Most of the oversized matches I'm cutting here are 6mm thick and 12mm wide, mainly because I needed some standardized dimensions to make things easier to fabricate. Now cutting the print bait out of the failed project, it's best to use a material with a sealed surface so you can wipe it clean in case it gets scribbled with ink soaking through the paper. In case you're wondering, yes, even the failed project itself was partially made from reclaimed wood. And six jack straw cutting hours later, it's time to glue everything together. But before that, I want to ask you to subscribe if you haven't already, because currently I am working more than full time making these videos, and I need this channel to grow fast this year in order to keep that up and justify the time spent. Let's hit 50k this year! have ourselves the Y and the X axis. It's very important to do the glue up on a really flat surface so as not to have things all twisted and bent to begin with. And as you can see right now the linear rails aren't much more than strips of wood either. That's because only now, after gluing everything together, I can start trimming them to shape. Doing it this way allows me to achieve much greater precision, as things might be slightly off during glue up, trimming it to its final width on the table saw makes the rails as parallel as it's gonna get using wood. The actual 45 degree guide surfaces are done on the router table, or rather, makeshift router table as I haven't yet built a proper one. Here it is extremely important to do a smooth and consistent final pass in order to leave the guide surfaces without ripples for the rollers to catch onto. That's why I clamped one of these wooden springs to the fence, doing shallow cuts, carefully edging towards the real deal to get some, as stupid as that may sound, practice feeding the material through the router smoothly. And the linear rails are done. We now have these wonderful hardwood rails on all sides for the V-Groove rollers to roll on. And I almost ruined it going too deep over there, 
because these dinky little clamps are not enough to secure the fans against vibrations. Technically speaking, I knew that already, but thought I could get away with it nonetheless. But unfortunately, I couldn't. My sister said the Y-axis in the CAD model looks like a window, and looking at it in real life now, I think I have to agree. What do you think? Leave a comment. Speaking of looks though, you might have noticed I specifically chose not less lumber. I reckon the reasons for that are clear, just wanted to point it out. Though what you cannot see on camera is that all this wood has been around for many years and thus thoroughly dried. That's actually a huge benefit to using reclaimed material, because now it's not only built like a balsa wood airplane, but even almost as lightweight as one. Next up I'll glue on these spacers, which are actually still missing, and afterward I can start assembling the main structure, aka three pieces of chipboard that hold everything together. I just realized I made a mistake during glue up on the x-axis. These 10x12s should have been attached vertically instead of horizontally like I did. Definitely not the end of the world, it just means it slightly deviates from the plans as I need to shuffle things around a little bit. So if you were wondering why these spacers don't reach out all the way to the linear rails, this is why. Anyway, the particle board. I'm going to glue and screw these pieces together, screws not for stability but mainly for the clamping action since I don't have appropriately sized clamps. The other side needs to be done face down on a flat surface to ensure the front edges of the two braces are indeed parallel, otherwise it'll twist the x-axis once I screw it on, compromising accuracy. And while the glue on these dries, I'm going to start making the V-groove rollers. For these I'll cut off a small strip of this 6mm beach plywood, drill some holes, cut it into pieces and stick the resulting square onto the shaft of this little DC motor, which I'm going to use as a makeshift lathe to turn it round and eventually into the desired shape. I did that 7 more times because I need 8 rollers in total, of course being handmade these aren't exactly the same, however they don't even need to be as you'll see later. With the rollers done we need to start thinking about the print bait and for that I have this plate of 3mm MDF onto which I'm going to glue these thicker strips of MDF in an H layout to get at least somewhat of a structural integrity along with more strips of this 3mm stuff to strengthen the sides. Very important if you plan on making something like this from several layers, always choose at the very least the same sort of material, if not the exact same, because as I learned from my table saw sled where I glued a hardwood strip to the MDF, a sandwich of different materials will bend like a bimetallic strip when subject to changes in ambient humidity or even natural shrinkage. So that's why I chose MDF for the structure, even though sprues would theoretically have done a better job while simultaneously adding less weight. Yes, it's already glued together. Basically, while I was talking, it decided to do that all by itself. Guess it must have figured another glue app montage would be too boring at this point in the video. But I'm sure you got the point. With all these big parts mostly done, I think it's finally time to start assembling things temporarily. Since I'm trying to not do the same mistake I did on the old pen plotter, namely ruin serviceability by gluing too many things together, the axes will only be screwed to the frame. That's quite a bit more complicated for the x-axis because if you ever tried drilling holes into the edge of a piece of particle board, you'll know that it is almost impossible to get a hole where you want it to be and not offset by a couple of millimeters. So to circumvent that, I drill the mounting holes in the x-axis only as big as I want the pilot holes to be, allowing me to use the x-axis itself as a template to drill the pilot holes exactly where they are supposed to end up. This looks already quite a lot like a pen plotter, I can't believe that even though this can print on double the size of paper, it's not actually that much bigger than the old one. Look at that! There's not much different in size, even though this one can literally print on an A4 sheet of paper, whereas this one can only do A5. That's weird. It's not much longer, it's not much wider, just a little bit bigger, but apparently much more efficient. 
I also fabricated these cute little feet which just screw into the Y axis from below to prevent the whole thing from tipping over. And that's where I'm going to leave it at for this first episode. We basically have the gantry finished. It's quite sturdy, in any case more than I expected. The next job would be to mount the print bed onto the linear rails as well as the X carriage. Well, I guess first we need to build the X carriage before mounting it. But well, that's what I want to do in the next video because as you might have noticed, I'm currently trying to increase video production and three 15 plus minute videos per month would definitely be a little too stressful at the moment. Maybe we can get there, just not yet. Now for all those who are disappointed that I dropped the idea of putting a laser engraver on this thing but still watching nonetheless, the main reason for that decision is that the 28BYJ48 stepper motors I plan on reusing from the old pen plotter can only be so accurate due to backlash in the gearing. When I said I would build a pen plotter that doubles up as a laser engraver, I was thinking of using some salvage stepper motors to get better precision. However, since that's obviously not happening right now, I figured if I'm already going to spend money on a laser at some point in the future, I might as well spend a few more bucks and get a cutting laser that can also engrave to build an entire enclosed laser cutter with fume extraction and everything. So that is it, I'll see you again hopefully very soon, although not exactly sure, I currently still struggle with filming several videos simultaneously, so there might be some irregularities in uploads over the next few months. But nonetheless, stay tuned to see whether these crazy wooden linear rails are going to work or not. And don't forget to hit that like button if you fancy. Bye!